motion be agreed to? Winston, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Mr Speaker, we have a supplementary order paper with respect to this bill because this is a bill that's extraordinarily biased and prejudicial to the realm countries in the Pacific. Foreign Affairs Minister Murray McCulley has continually emphasised the special and historic relationship of the realm countries and the social assistance portability of the Cook Islands bill for today and Noe and uh, Tokelau is just doing half a job. We appeal to the Minister to finish what he started and amend the agreement to exempt the realm countries from Section 8C, and that's what our submittee order paper will be about. A concession to those who retire to these three islands is a gesture of goodwill and their special relationship to New Zealand, and I mean with a capital S, notes that the citizens of the realm countries of the Cook Islands are born New Zealand citizens. Now, the simple change in the rule means that we do not have to return, if you are a Cook Islander, a Nuan, or a um, Tokelau Islander, or if that, for that matter you are a New Zealander working in the islands. You don't have to return and live for New Zealand, in New Zealand for five years, as is the requirement now. It seems illogical to deny a similar concession to a special group of retirees of the Cook Islands, Nui and Tokelau, as well as expat Kiwis who continue to be unfairly treated by the New Zealand superannuation system. Now, you'll recall that Mr McCulley made it very clear that he intended to change the law and to give full portability to people living there, whether they be from New Zealand or the islands, without the five-year rule. And then he used the Christchurch earthquake as the reasons why he wouldn't do it. Now, with respect, that is not even remotely reasonable. I want to ask the members in this House, how can they possibly sit there in this government, and the Select Committee for that matter, knowing that 65,000 people came into this country and after 10 years got full super? No 50% requirement, of course. Just after 10 years got full super, and there's the National Party excusing that absolute bias in favour of them, whilst the special relationship countries that Alfred Nairo knows all about are treated in this way. Less than 100 people will be affected, 100 against 65,000 now and rising. So what does the Ministry of Social Development say about that? Well, of course, they've got a deafening silence. And I want New Zealanders to know just how unfair this government is with those people that we have known since their great uh, Richard Seddon decided to go on an expansionist tour around the Pacific. This is history we're talking about now. We're talking about probably 100 people in those three islands being so grossly treated unfairly, whereas people are coming in from overseas and in their tens of thousands, now 65,000 plus, and they do not think it's anything of a moment at all. How can they be so biased? And my plea to Alfred Naro and his other mates over there is to talk to his colleagues and try and get some sense into their heads. If you can condone 65,000 picking up full pension and super after just 10 years, whether contributor, taxpayer or not, how can you possibly deny 100 people on the islands this sorts of equity? Now, Mr Barclay has been here for five minutes and he thinks it's a joke. But Mr Barclay, it's not a joke. For us who know the Pacific and understand their needs, this is important to their development, the dichotomy of population and eco economics and social life. And it's grossly, it's grossly irresponsible to think that Mr Barclay does at the moment, to think it's a joke. It's not. He cannot answer the question. Why should people come in who have never worked in this country and after 10 years get full super? Any explanation for that? Who? 65,000 of them have come in here. Mr Key was asked this question last year and like everything else he fobbed it off. And now we are in the islands talking about these three countries which Murray McCulley, which Murray McCulley four years ago made a promise to fix up. Now I know that Mr Naro is an honourable man and I'm asked Mr Naro, Naro to put his career on the line here. Make a statement for his people. That's what he's in the National Party for. We don't want tokenism in the National Party. We want someone who will stand up for the very people he says he's committed to. In all of South Auckland, in, Kike, in, in places like uh, Christchurch, in all over the countryside where there are huge island populations. Mr Ngaro, stand up for your people now and be remembered for it. Carmel Cipollone.
I just want to thank the former speaker for giving me 30 seconds to speak in the house before we go home tonight. Order. Speaker.